Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. Today, the origins of Sant Mat, the five names, sometimes referred to as Panch Nam, the Guru Mantra, and the identity of Sant Tulsi Sahib's Guru. A brief summary and an update. Sants of antiquity, long before the time of Guru Kabir. It's unknown who the first sant was in ancient times. There are references in Krishna Vaishnava texts to sants. A few of those Rishi sages who authored certain Upanishads pertaining to the formless god, inner light and sound meditation, or Nada Shabad Yoga, some dating back many centuries BCE, seem to have been at the level of sants. In somewhat more recent times, in some circles associated with the Tulsi Sabis, the Tulsi Sahib Satsang, Garaknat, an 11th century Nath yogi, is considered to be a sant. Baba Garaknat, as he's known, did teach Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. The Kabir Panth tradition of northern sants includes much Nath yogi terminology in its literature and apparently was somewhat influenced by the Nath tradition. The 15th century poet mystic and spiritual master Kabir can be credited with helping to greatly expand the influence of the sant tradition in India. The first masters formally referred to as sants that are usually mentioned in terms of sant literature and history are the 12th century poet Jayadeva, author of the Gita Govinda, as well as Vishobha Keshar, who was Sant Nam Dev's spiritual master. Seeing references in Krishna Vaishnava Hindu scriptures, Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras back in the 19th century was of the point of view that the Sant movement dated back to the time of Krishna thousands of years ago, that Krishna knew of Sants during his day. An example of Sants mentioned in a Hindu scripture called the Bhagavad Purana, quote, such individuals who have achieved the unity of Atman, or soul, and Param Atman, supreme soul, or God, are known as Sants. According to the Bhagavad Purana, there is no one greater than a Sant in the eyes of the Divine. Lord Krishna said to his disciple, quote, All devotees like you are very dear to me. They are dearer to me than Lord Brahma. Lord Shankara, Goddess Lakshmi, and even my own soul. Therefore I walk behind these saints, hoping that the dust arising from their holy feet would touch my body and purify me." Unquote. That is a Hindu scripture called the Bhagavad Purana, quoted by Swami Vyasanan Ji Maharaj in his book, The Inward Journey of the Soul. There is no end to the number of saints or saints who have appeared in the yugas or epochs of Sat, Treta, Dwapar, and Kali Yuga. I sing of the celebrated one I have heard of and bow my head to all the others. A quote from Jan Gopal, a disciple of Sant Dadu Dayal of Rajasthan, in The Life Story of Dadu Dayal, the book of Janma Lila, translated into English, in the book The Hindi Biography of Dadu Dayal. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, India, was the first Sant to adopt and popularize the term Sant Mat meaning the teachings of the saints, viewing the tradition of the saints from a holistic, unified perspective. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras quoted many different saints throughout the, the centuries in his writings. 
Sant Mat can be defined as the teachings or mat of the saints or saints or sages. It can also be translated as path of the masters. In India, it is common knowledge that the term Sant Mat was coined or adapted by Param Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras back there in the 19th century. Sant Mat was adopted and popularized by Tulsi Sahib as a new name for this spiritual path or genre of mysticism. But the Sant tradition with its many guru lineages or branches is a spiritual movement that dates back many centuries to ancient India. Finding evidence for Tulsi Sahib's spiritual master, the group he was affiliated with, by noticing examples of Guru Bhakti in various Sant texts. For instance, in the first part of Sarbachan Radhaswami prose, Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram provides an introduction to the essence of the teachings of Swamiji Maharaj, the founder of the Radhaswami faith, a major branch of Sant Mat, founded in 1861. It includes Shivdayal Singh's or Swamiji's list of India's greatest saints, including the name of one fairly unknown guru during those days, a contemporary master by the name of Tulsi Sahib. Quote, this is from Sarbachan Prose, Part 1. The names of some of the perfect and true saints, sads, and fakirs who manifested themselves during the past 700 years are Kabir Sahib, Tulsi Sahib, Jagjawan Sahib, Garab Das, Paltu Sahib, Guru Nanak, Dadu Sahib, Tulsi Das, Nabhaji, Swami Hari Das, Sir Das, and Rai Das, also known as Ravi Das. And some of the Muslim names are Shams Tabriz, Rumi, Hafez, Sarmad. A perusal of their writings would give an idea of their spiritual attainments. Said Seth Shivdayal Singh, also known as Sant Radha Swami Sahib, or Swami Ji Maharaj, in the Sarbachan Radha Swami prose. And we know just how significant a reference that turned out to be. One of these things is not like the others. In other words, one of the names on Swamiji's list of the greatest saints in the history of India is quite different from the rest in that it was a name of a contemporary guru, not a classic saint who lived centuries earlier. Rather, someone contemporary with Swamiji Maharaj himself. This inclusion of the name Tulsi Sahib on Swamiji's list is pregnant with meaning. After all, we know that Tulsi Sahib was the guru of Swamiji Maharaj, the initiating spiritual master. Swamiji and his wife Radha Ji were part of the Tulsi Sahib Satsang community as were their families and extended families. Furthermore, after the death of Tulsi Sahib in 1843, Swamiji Maharaj became closely affiliated with a spiritual successor of Tulsi Sahib in the Tulsi Sahib community by the name of Maharaj Gudhari Sahib and attended his satsang, supported his spiritual mission all the way up to the time of his passing till the time of his passing in August of 1860. Then a few short months later, Swamiji officially inaugurated his own public spiritual mission, his satsang in Agra, during February of 1861. For more information on the connection between Swamiji Maharaj of the Radha Swami faith, Gudhari Sahib, and Sant Tulsi Sahib, scroll down to the links section, the notes section below, for a link to an article I have written on that subject.
A similar list of saints, some of the greatest saints in the history of India, was made by Maharishi Mehi Paramahans and can also be quite instructive, providing us with another example of how to recognize Guru Bhakti present in the writings of saints. Here we find the same pattern of earlier gurus of Indian history being listed as the greatest of saints, along with one obscure contemporary name that is not like the others, thus revealing who Maharishi Mehi's guru was. Maharishi Mehi Paramahans in the Padavali. Great praise to all the saints. In which manner will one pray to them? My mind is so very dirty and inexperienced. Saints, being destroyers of sorrows, do away with worldly traps. They are the treasure troves of knowledge and meditation, highly proficient in the techniques of single-minded concentration and the yoga of sound. They propagate the same in plain language all over the world. Great are the sages and saints like Buddha, Ramanand, for eliminating sins. Sacrifice to the saints like Kabir, Nanak, Goswami Tulsi Das, and Tulsi Sahib, Dadu, Sundar Das, Sir Das, Ravi Das, Jagjawan Sab, Paltu Sab, etc. They are all great benefactors, delivering, liberating human beings from the fears of the world. Satguru Devi and other saints are also highly adorable. Maharishi Mehi sings their magnificence and lies at their sacred feet with faith and love. Maharishi Mehi Paramahan's Book of Padavali, hymn number two, Hail to the Sants. In this case, Satguru Devi is the significant name, not like the others on the list. It is the name of his guru. In 1909, Maharishi Mehi met Baba Devi Sahib in Bhagalpur, Bihar. Maharishi Mehi, after receiving the practice from a true master, was deeply satisfied. Maharishi Mehi became a disciple and initiate of Baba Devi Sahib and refers to him, of course, in his hymns, putting him up there with Kabir, Guru Nanak, and other great saints of the past. The same pattern of Guru Bhakti references embedded in hymns can also be observed with Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras in his writings, too. He, too, had similar lists of all-time greatest saints in the history of India. And one name in particular that appears on his list is pregnant with meaning, different from all the others. One relatively obscure, living master, a contemporary guru in his day. He proclaimed and elevated as being of the same status or stature as Kabir, Dadu, Guru Nanak Dev, Mirabai, Surdas, etc. The name of that guru is Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. In Tulsi Sahib's spiritual classic known as the Ghat Ramayan, a follower of the Kabir Panth asked Tulsi Sahib, Who can be called a guru? What is the true path or panth or religion? To what religion do you belong? Was his question. During the lengthy discourses that follow, Tulsi Sahib of Hathras lists names of some of the saints he considers to be the greatest his spiritual heroes of all time. Quote, Listen, O Pool Das, I have given out the same true secrets which saints like Kabir Sahib, Dadu Sahib, Rai Das Ji, Darya Sahib, Guru Nanak, 
Surdas, Nabhaji, and Mirabai have spoken of. They too have composed similar hymns describing the bliss of the highest spiritual region, whose glory I also have sung. Blessed by the grace and dust of the holy feet of saints. A quote from the Ghat Ramayan, a great spiritual classic composed by Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Also from that same Maheshwari translation, again during Tulsi Sahib's dialogue with Pul Das of the Kabir Panth about the true teachings of Kabir, Sant Dharam Das and the Anurag Sagar, a sacred text of the Sant tradition. Quote, Nanak, Dadu, Darya Sahib, Mirabai, Surdas, Kabir, and Nabaji have all reached the mystic sky, the high region, and have given out the secrets. Their souls have gotten across and merged there. To mention a few saints, I pick up the names of Dadu, Mirabai, Nabha, Nanak, Darya Sahib, and Surdas. Kabir's name I mention again. Unquote. Another passage from Sant Tulsi Sahib. On page 125, there is an entire full length hymn, or Shabd, of Sant Darya Sahib, quoted by Tulsi Sahib. And in another section of the Ghat Ramayan, recently translated into English by the Radhaswami Satsang Tarn Tarn, in a dialogue with a Nanak Panthi, Tulsi Sahib again mentioned Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar, including him on a list of the highest saints. Quote, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Kabir Sahib, Dadu Sahib, Darya Sahib, etc., are all against the killing of living beings. From a pro-vegetarian section, page 256 of Baba Kehar Singh's commentary on the Ghat Ramayan, published by the Tarn Turan Satsang. It's somewhat unusual for Tulsi to have frequently mentioned the relatively obscure name of Darya Sahib, giving him equal status as Kabir, Guru Nanak, but I believe the explanation for this is quite understandable. He's answering the question, to what religion do you belong? I am told that there are many more references to Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar in the as yet untranslated portions of Tulsi Sahib's writings, currently only available in Hindi. Tulsi Sahib has mentioned the name of Darya Sahib many times in his various satsang discourses and hymns because I believe that's the name of his spiritual master. The founder of the school of Santmat he had been personally affiliated with. Tulsi Sahib authored several books including the Ratan Sagar, Ghat Ramayan, Shabdavali, and Padma Sagar. These references to Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar in the writings of Tulsi Sahib are there for us to notice. They provide us with our one and only solid, tangible clue of history about the identity of Tulsi Sahib's guru. As with Maharishi Mehi's references to Baba Devi Sahib and the high praise displayed in early Radhaswami texts for Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras and Maharaj Gudhari Sahib of Lucknow, these references to Darya Sahib in the writings of Tulsi Sahib, suggest his guru affiliation. In the same way, they give us the name of his guru and the Sant Mat community, the Sangit Tulsi Sahib had been associated with. The Sant Mat we know can be traced back to Sant Darya Sahib. Note in Sant Mat history, there was another Darya, Darya Sahib of Marwar, who passed on in 1758, but that's a different Darya Sahib. 
Tulsi Sahib was born in 1763 and passed on in 1843. He would have been in his teens when Darya Sahib of Bihar was still alive, old enough to have perhaps received initiation from Darya Sahib of Bihar, or one of his representatives, in other words. Darya was a towering figure occupying some of that space in history in India between the time of Guru Kabir and that of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Darya passed on when Tulsi was around 17 years old. Darya Sahib appointed several saints to be his spiritual successors. Fakar Das, Basti Das, Sant Tika Das, and Sant Guna Das. And they were also, of course, contemporaries with Tulsi Sahib, who likely spent some time in Bihar. Bihar was and remains home base for the Sangit, the Satsang community of Sant Darya Sahib and his immediate spiritual successors there. If Tulsi Sahib hadn't received initiation directly from Darya by the age of 17, the references to Darya Sahib in Tulsi's writings still make sense if he received initiation from one of Darya's spiritual successors, which is another strong possibility. Anyone initiated by these successors would likely have much reverence for Darya Sahib as the great master of Sant Mat during those days. Just like in the 1960s and 70s, many had a great respect for Sawan Singh as being the great master of Bayas slightly earlier. According to the texts from the Sant Darya group, these spiritual successors of Darya Sahib were authorized by him to initiate people into Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation during this Kali Yuga age. Sat Parush is the living Lord, and his own son serves as the ladder. That ladder is continued through me, says Darya. Fakar Das, Basti Das, and Guna Das are the ladders proceeding from me. Whoever they appoint as their spiritual successors would also be known as ladders. Thus will my line of succession continue. Those souls who remain in obedience to these successors shall cross the ocean of this world, this ocean of samsara. How long will this line of succession continue? How long will this line of succession continue? Kindly relate it to us in your own words, asked a disciple of his, Fakar Das. Listen mindfully, O oh, Fakar Das. I explain this to you, says Darya. As long as the discipline of the sound current is preserved unadulterated, the line of succession will truly continue. But when it is mixed with outer rituals and display of external garbs, my sound current will part company. My divine essence will depart, and the souls will go into the mouth of calm the Lord of Death, the Lord of Time, Kal Naringen. And the souls will go into the mouth of Kal. I shall then come to this world again and shall proclaim the teaching of the sound current. Proclaiming the teaching, I shall found the line of succession again. And emancipating the souls, I shall take them to my abode. For eons and eons I have been coming and imparting the teaching of the true sound current. That's from a bhajan or hymn of Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar, found translated in English in the book Darya Sahib, Saint of Bihar, published by the Bayas Satsang, one of the volumes in their Classics of the East, their Mystics of the East series. The disciples of Darya Sahib believed that Darya was the reincarnation of Guru Kabir 
And so that's why in this bhajan, Darya Sahib is speaking as a kind of cosmic being for ages and eons, for epochs, for yugas. I have been coming here. And this is a reference to the teaching about Kabir incarnating during each of the four yugas or epochs of time, being a kind of master of the masters or Adi Guru, founding guru of Santmat in each of these yugas of time. And as I mentioned, disciples of Darya Sahib of Bihar believed that he was the reincarnation of Kabir, that the time had come during this Kali Yuga for the path to get a boost, to get reinvented, reestablished, reinvigorated again. As with Sant Tulsi Sahib and Radha Swami, this earlier branch of Sant Mat, propagated by Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar, included the use of the five name mantra, the five names, the Panch Nam, Guru Mantra, the Simran words. A view of history that understood Sant Dharam Das to be the primary spiritual successor of Guru Kabir. The centrality of a sacred text of Sant Mat known as the Anurag Sagar, the Ocean of Love, a kind of Gnostic gospel of Guru Kabir's teachings, a summary of Kabir's teaching, and the meditation practice known as Surit Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. The followers of Darya Sahib believed that Darya was the reincarnation of Guru Kabir, come to interject new life into the path of Santmat during this Kali Yuga age that was founded earlier in Kali Yuga by Kabir. Sant Darya Sahib's guru was Sat Sahib. Sat Sahib was associated with the Sant Dharam Das line of Sat Gurus, the line of masters associated with the Kabir line of masters associated with Sant Dharam Das. See my research about the five names and the Dharam Das Kabir line of masters in my booklet, The Origins of Sant Mat, The Five Names, and The Identity of Tulsi Sahib's Guru. Scroll down in the notes section below if you're listening to this podcast by way of YouTube for a link to this booklet, as well as the earlier five-part podcast series based on it that I did a while back. For the first time, the possibility of Sant Darya Sahib being the spiritual master of Sant Tulsi Sahib has been mentioned in a new book, the second edition of the book, Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras. This is the update part. This has now gotten a mention. The new edition of Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras, was published in 2017. It represents a greatly expanded volume. Darya Sahib is mentioned in the new edition of the book Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras. Quote, among the saints whom Tulsi Sahib himself singles out in the Ghat Ramayan as Satgurus, true masters, are Ja Aladin Rumi, Kabir Sahib, Dadu Dayal, Rai Das Ji, Darya Sahib, who may have been Tulsi Sahib's own guru, I'm still quoting here, who may have been Tulsi Sahib's own guru, Guru Nanak, Sir Das Ji, Nabha Das Ji, Nabha Das Ji, Mansur, Mirabai, Sarmad, and Shams of Tabriz, unquote. The reference to Darya Sahib perhaps being Tulsi Sahib's own guru, quote unquote, was not in the earlier 1978 first edition of the book, Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras, but now appears in this new, much larger, expanded 2017 edition published by the Bayas Satsang, 
the Radhaswami Book Department, also known as scienceofthesoul.org. In conclusion, Mystic Verses of Sant Tulsi Sahib. Let me tell you about the dwelling place, the region, the land of my beloved. It is beyond the realm of Nirankar. That is Tulsi's abode. Satnam's abode is the land of bliss. It all lies in the eternal realm. Indeed, O Tulsi, only upon reaching the fourth realm is one called a saint. There is one separate nameless lord, or Anami Parush, beyond the void and the great void, Soon and Maha Soon. That lord is the beloved of the Sants. Sants make their court at his abode, says Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras, in his Gat Ramayan. This is a kind of Sufi poetry section of the writings of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Like some of the other earlier Sants of history, they had some Sufi or Muslim initiates, some Muslim disciples. It's even true that some of those Muslim initiates received a different set of five names, five initiating names, five kind of Persian or Islamic sounding names of God at the time of their initiation. They're very beautiful names, by the way. They have a very beautiful vibration, a great cadence. From the ghazals of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, addressed to a disciple of his by the name of Sheikh Taki. Listen, O Taki, if you wish to see him, under no circumstance should you seek elsewhere. Within your own self, behold the magnificence of your beloved. Inside the pupil of the eye is a sesame seed. Within this tiny seed lies the entire mystery. Look and see what lies just beyond this veil of darkness. Rest assured, the secret of the 14 realms will be disclosed to you. Do not be lazy. With a vigilant mind, look within. Listen to the call emanating from the highest region, forever beckoning you to come and behold your beloved. It is not arduous to reach the beloved, O Taki. The difficulty lies in being able to gaze upon him. Tulsi says, without the grace of a perfect mystic, the path of liberation remains distant and beyond one's reach. Cleanse the sanctuary of your heart and welcome the beloved. Remove your attention from all else to make room for him to be seated within. Look with your mind's eye at all the drama that takes place around you, so many captivating scenes to torment your heart. One heart with countless desires, yet it continues to lust after even more. Where then is there room to seat the beloved? What a great pity. He who dwells in the natural mosque of the body visits artificial temples and mosques only to suffer in misery. Within the arch of the natural Kaaba, or sacred place, Listen with rapt attention. A voice resounds from your original abode, calling you back home. Why do you stumble and wander about in search of the friend? The path to reach your beloved passes through the royal vein. Seek a perfect master with patience and a sincere heart, Otaki. 
For he will help you. He will assist you. He will help you to understand the way to reach the royal vein. Your inner ear will open if you put his teachings into practice, even for but a few days. And the path leading to the Supreme Being, the greatest of all, will lie before you. This is Tulsi's call. Come, take heed and put it into practice. Says Saint Tulsi Sahib, Saint of Hathras. Thank you.